I thought this issue of lectins was uh, mostly a non-issue anymore. I'm just not in touch, am I? Um, <clears throat> somebody asked me about those recently, and I've seen a lot of comments. And again, you know, I know Steve Gundry wrote a book about the plant paradox, and um, it was, he's got this major uh, focus on lectins. Then all the plant people piled on and uh, really pilloried Dr. Gundry. At the end of the day, most of the plant people will acknowledge that lectins do exist. Um, and at the end of the day, Dr. Gundry uh, admits that actually they're pretty safe, uh, assuming you cook them really well. He uses a pressure cooker or recommends one. As, as often happens, I'm not sure that I totally agree with either one of them, either sides of this debate. Here's the thing. Uh, yes, lectins do exist. Um, and for the most part, uh, if you do cook them well, they're not that big of a deal. However, there are genetic uh, groups, for example, folks that have celiac disease, appear to have a special sensitivity to one of the most uh, prevalent lectins, and you may not have known this, gluten. Gluten is a very prevalent lectin, and celiac disease is a, an uber reaction among people with certain sensitivities to uh, the lectin uh, gluten. Here's another thing, though, and people will say, well, you know, that's uh, unusual groups. That's um, You have to go into a specific HLA antibody uh, gene pool. Not so fast. Actually, heptoglobin 2-2 is a big actor here, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go back and talk about the debate itself. This was in um, uh, The Independent. Is lectin the new gluten? Well, I think what they were trying to do is make fun of gluten, but the reality is that both of them are real. Um, why you shouldn't fall for the latest dumb diet fad. And then the, the next page, they've got an advertisement the healthiest possible or the healthiest breakfast you could possibly eat, according to dietitians. Really? Pancakes with syrup and berries? Hmm. So we're going to start off with um, a video. We're, we're going to cover this video is going to cover a lot of the basics, a lot of the debate that happened over the past couple of years. In following videos, we'll get a little bit more, uh, a little bit deeper into the subject and the biochemistry. So in this video, Joel Kine goes off on Stephen Gundry, saying he doesn't have the uh, public trust and that uh, any discussion of lectins is inappropriate. Dr. Kine, I know, I can see it in your face. You're a cardiologist. You take care of people who have heart disease. You deal with the problem. By the way, uh, I forgot to mention, this is Travis Stork and their show, The Doctors. And that was Dr. Stork right there of obesity in this country you say not so fast absolutely you know we're dealing with serious diseases and nutritional advice isn't hypothetical we're talking about heart disease cancer multiple sclerosis what a medical doctor tells a patient should be a matter of trust and it has to be based on the scientific method and that's where we smell a rat in this debate dr gundry in all respect has not published a published paper on this topic little tiny paragraphs that is not a basis to change the nutritional pattern. Let me tell you three important facts. Number one, if you want to live a long life in this world, whether you live in Japan, Greece, Italy, uh, Costa Rica, or Loma Linda, you eat beans, you eat peas, you eat lentils. The universal food of longevity is the food he takes away. Bad idea. Number two, the largest nutritional research data in the world just came out in the past few weeks. It's called the Pure Study. They looked what happened to 135,000 people. You ate more legumes, beans, peas, lentils. You live longer. That's not a side effect. That's what we want this audience and the viewership to enjoy. And let me tell you the last and third part. We use lectins in medicine to diagnose cancer and to treat cancer. There are benefits to lectins. Dr. Gundry calls them killer lectins. That is abusive of the public trust. In fact, I don't believe he has the public trust because the scientific basis is the emperor wearing no clothes. And so, uh, Joel, tell us how you really feel about it. So let's give uh, Stephen Gundry, uh, Dr. Gundry, his airtime. Well, you live for that long length of time. In my book, I ask people to eat beans as long as you put them in a pressure cooker. 
So that's actually a major part of the point. Uh, lectins are real. Um, for, the most, for the most part, they're not unhealthy to most of us. Um, you do need to cook them. Uh, now, I haven't read Stephen Gundry's book. I haven't gotten that deep into um, what, whether he's saying never to eat beans. It sounds to me like he's saying here, yeah, go ahead and eat beans. Let's go to uh, Mayo Clinic um, and their, their discussion about celiac disease in the news. She starts off by saying that um, it's a total myth may even lead to autoimmune disorders such as celiac disease and Crohn's disease. Uh, this is a, a total myth, and today I'm going to tell you why you shouldn't eliminate these. So, she start, like I said, she starts off saying it's a total myth. Then we go just back to 36 seconds. Um, that was at 15 seconds, by the way. Okay, we're going to start right here at 34, and then... She next says, and grains. It's true, lectins can be toxic, but... So, what does all this mean? We'll get to that. Again, a lot of it appears to be perspective. Um, only if they're eaten, eaten raw. And so, there is a lot of truth to that. Lectins are much more of a problem if, if eaten raw. Uh, back when I was much more plant-based, I did a, um, a few times I had beans that were undercooked. And I remember having, oh, it's an experience and not a good one. So what does all this mean? Uh, lectins are real. They are chemicals that uh, plants make, and they can cause significant um, problems. And uh, this is also from the Mayo Clinic. Evidently, Jocelyn C. had not talked very much with the folks that wrote uh, this. This is a, a public information on celiac disease by the Mayo Clinic. And as you can see, yes, it's, um, it's, a, it's a, an inflammatory disease of the small bowel where the villi just uh, get, um, they disappear and the, the lining of the small bowel just becomes cobblestone. It's a significant problem. Here's another thing. Uh, evidently, she didn't talk to Ale uh, Alessio Fasano, uh, F-A-S-A-N-O. Uh, I think he's at Harvard now, and he's got a major uh, program on haptoglobin. Remember, I've talked about haptoglobin several times. Haptoglobin is a genet Haptoglobin 2 is a genetic variation of haptoglobin, which we use uh, in terms of cleaning up hemoglobin. Why did I make that hard right turn? Because ha people with haptoglobin 2-2 have significant problems with gliadins. What are gliadins? Gluten is the most commonly known gliadin. And gliadins are a uh, type of lectin. So yes, lectins are real. Yes, they can cause problems. Here's where the real, and I don't, once you start getting into the debate, both sides of, of this issue usually end up agreeing that the lectins are real. Yes, they can cause problems. Now, if you've seen, with, as you've seen with Joel Kahn, you even see it with Stephen Gundry some, and you clearly saw it with Jocelyn C. Um, most of them say it's if they're undercooked. Now, I think all of them are, begin are leaving out the point that there are certain genetic um, uh, genotypes uh, that have problems with certain gliadins. And I, I think part of the reason is they think, well, you know, the folks that have the genotypes for, um, for celiac disease are, are, are so rare, it's not a big deal. And, it, and they're trying to fight the misperception that eating... Um, uh, glutens for anybody can cause a problem. Actually, uh, there's significant evidence that um, leaky gut is more of an issue than you think. Haptoglobin 2-2, for example, is far more common than most people think, and those are the folks that tend to have problems with this issue. Um, I've done several videos on that. I'm not going to get too deep in haptoglobin right now. In fact, I'm not going to get too deep in terms of celiac disease, 
but I will cover that in future videos. If you've made it this far, thank you for your interest. Fifteen years ago, Time Magazine had a cover article saying that inflammation causes heart attacks, cancer, and Alzheimer's. Wouldn't it be nice if, the, if most docs understood how to do that inflammation testing? Well, uh, we have a course on it. It's, uh, it takes you less than two hours and 30 bucks. Uh, in fact, maybe you want to buy one for your doc.